Amnon, your forte is computer vision. Um, can you tell us first a little bit about what computer vision is? How do you make a computer understand what it sees? Well, you, you know, when we look at images, we don't see pixels. We see objects, we see their actions, we extract meaning from the image. Now, this is the essence of intelligence, to be able to extract meaning from the raw data around us. Now, um, when you give machines the ability uh, to learn, and this is captured by intelligence, is captured by the ability to learn, and when you give machines the ability uh, uh, to learn, this encompasses visual processing, encompasses natural language processing, captures game theory, search, and, and, and much more. When it comes to visual processing, it is called computer vision, and this is the area my focus area both in research and in industrial uh, interest. And what are some of the things that are natural for us and easy uh, but are hardest to teach computers to understand and see? Well, the challenge is, is image variability. It means a physical object can create an infinite amount of images by changing the illumination, nighttime, daytime, indoor, outdoor, outdoor, by changing viewing position, by changing context. A class of objects like a chair has also many different shapes, many different objects of different shapes are labeled by us as chairs. Yet we effortlessly look at a picture of a chair and say it is a chair. But now imagine the enormous amount of images that the class of objects called chair would generate. You know, many, many shapes, many, many uh, viewing positions, illuminations, context, and so forth. Now take that and multiply it by 30,000, which is more or less the number of classes that we have in our memory. Now this kind of scalability and being able to match object classes into an image within milliseconds is today beyond what computers can do, but you know, science is, is moving very fast and in the f last few years exponentially fast. And this can do this? It's the beginning. <laughs> can, can, can you show us how okay, it works? Well, well first uh, I'll tell you what, what it is. We, we, now computer vision reached the stage where you can actually do useful uh, inferences. So we set up building a portable computer vision engine whose uh, ultimate goal is to reach human level uh, perception. Now, I, I truly believe that it's, it is achievable in the near future. Wait, what's near future? Because near this future, is big. five years. Five no, years five computer years. can yes. reach the level of human perception? Yes, you know, today, almost human level perception, you see that in cars. You know, there are millions of cars on the road who have a front-facing uh, camera. The front-facing camera is intelligent enough to scan the visual field, understand where vehicles are, where pedestrians are, where traffic lights are, traffic signs, road signs, and, and try to anticipate collision. There's a lots and lots of intelligence uh, going on there. And I believe the next frontier is, is wearable computing, computer vision on us or near us that continuously scan the visual field, understand where we are, what we are doing, what are our important locations, important moments, and then give us very important uh, information. So we started small. We said, okay, what would be you know, a focus group, a group of people who can really benefit from having a, a very advanced level a computer vision device? And, and the first focus group that came in mind are people who cannot see or people who do not see well. These are the visually impaired. So they could benefit from a device that will tell them what they're supposed to see. And this is the, the Orcam device. We've been working on it for the past, actually, four years. Uh, the last year is, is all pilot uh, studies with real uh, users. So it's, it's a clip-on camera. I don't know if anybody's... I thought somebody is going to take a picture of us. Yes, so it is a uh, clip-on uh, camera connected to a computing device that sits in the pocket. And uh, the camera continuously scans the vid visual field, matches and uh, looks for familiar patterns, and when it finds a pointing gesture of the user, then it starts providing information. So it matches the scene to patterns that it knows. For example, it knows about faces, it knows about buses, it knows about traffic lights, it knows about text everywhere, it has memory of many, many objects. Can we see it work? Okay, let's, uh, you know, let's do it spontaneously. Why? Let's you do it. I okay? do it? Yeah, you, you, you trust? Do it. That, that's, that's a lot of pressure right okay. now. Okay, so all what I need to teach you, or right, it's not working, the sound. Waking up. Okay, so it's working. Battery is 100% charged. Okay, so... It sounds like her. Yeah, it's, it's From the her. movie. Yes, 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 yes. But she, she doesn't do sex. No? Other than that. <laughs> it sounds like you tried. <laughs> <laughs> so,
So uh, all, all I need to teach you is how to point. Okay. So pointing is not like this. You have to you know, have your finger steady. You'll hear a beep. Take out your finger. Then you'll hear the sound of capturing an image. Okay. Keep your hand steady. And uh, let's try with the newspaper. And we'll start uh, reading. Now, because of the light here, we'll do it with your back to the light. So you'll okay. go like this. So put the camera. If it will not work, then I'll do it, okay? That, that, that's right. <laughs> if it doesn't work, it's my fault then. <laughs> well, you know, it, it takes 30 minutes to train a user. So it, uh, okay, it looks okay. Turn your back. Take this. So I'm going to go for the near, header first. Yeah, go for the header. Bring it near to you. Yeah, that, that's fine. Yep. Jerusalem Post. Wake up to a great desk with new currency. Okay, it was reading here. Okay, try this one here. All text is too small. Bring it to you. Bring it to you. Try now, to okay. hold it closer. Yeah. Okay, now point again. IDF opens Ooh. five Gaza war criminal <laughs> investigations. <laughs> Military prosecutor says seven cases closed. 9900. Yeah. Actually, it really takes 30 minutes to train a user. So I'm an early adopter. Yeah, so you're an early adopter and very, very quick learner. This yeah. is cool. <laughs> and I read the other day that Google Glass is now making available the... Google is making the Glass available on the Play Store for everyone Suspending. to buy. Suspending. Prep? Uh, so I'm... Okay. That's fine, that's fine. Yeah. It wants to stay... No, yeah. uh, <laughs> it wants to stay with us. Yeah. <laughs> it gets jealous. Yeah. <laughs> So now with the Google Glass available on the Play Store, um, is the race on for wearable devices for vision? What do you see happening in this field now? Well, I, I'm, I believe that there are many, many useful things one can do with the Google Glass, but the Google Glass is not designed for heavy computing and for you know, continuous visual uh, processing. If you turn on the video after a few minutes, the battery will, will, will drain. But I do believe that the race is on for uh, intelligent, intelligent uh, ma machine intelligent devices that are wearable, wearable machine intelligent uh, devices. You see that with the glass, you see it with the Apple Watch, you see it with a large number of accelerometers that you can uh, purchase uh, today. They're all, it's the early beginnings of a trend in which we will have computers on us and those computers will work always in the background, process sound, process uh, uh, vision, uh, process biometric uh, data, process uh, location. Okay, so this uh, makes me think about human enhancement. Uh, it's when we try to take a healthy human being and extend their ability beyond what biology allows. Is that on your roadmap for OrCam? Well, you know, uh, uh, surgery is, is a different uh, ball game. You know, I'm, I'm interested in technology that can be applied in very high volumes and applicable to everyone. And the transplant is uh, it's not in my horizon. It, it could come out, but <laughs> not by me. And what's your vision for computer vision, say, 5, 10, 20 years from now? Well, you know, we all carry a camera. Every smartphone has a camera, and we, almost all of us have smartphones. But these cameras are not intelligent. They don't do any, any process. So I do imagine that in the near future, we will have either a camera near us or a camera on us that has the ability to process information and provide us with a very useful uh, value. And uh, somewhere in the next five years, this would happen. Wow. And they say that um, kindness is the language that the deaf can hear and the blind can see. And this is incredibly kind product. So thank you for this. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>